Time for some bit shifting on the BBC Master. Stunt car racer, a 1989 game by Jeff Crammond, ported to most of the home systems. Amstrad Spectrum, Commodore, ST, Amiga, you know the drill, the big sellers from the time, which meant, of course, the BBC Micro didn't get a version because even when it was at its heights, only the, well, only the kind of very few big titles got ported to the system. So by 89, 90, no, really less superior software ported a version, then you weren't going to get one. And here's Stunt Car Racer running on a C64, which up from my money is one of the best 8-bit versions. Wonderful vector graphics. Uh, you race against a computer player or somebody over a serial link. And yeah, look at the frame rate. It's really good for an 8-bit and a lovely control. And yeah, it's one of the top 8-bit racers on the Spectrum, Amstrad or Commodore. And of course, great versions on the ST and Amiga as well, which have a much better frame rate and more colours. Now, recently with Stunt Car Racer, there's been a port for the Atari XL and XE. If you've got 128K, sadly, sadly, Chinivision only has a 65XE, so I've not been able to play it. But Bit Shifters, the guys behind all those superb demos, and of course, Prince of Persia on the BBC Micro, have ported the game to the BBC Master. Yes, yes this won't work on a 32K standard BBC B. You need 128K and a master for this to work. Won't work with an expanded BBC B. And a beautiful loading screen there. Stunt Car Razor by Jeff Crammond. BBC Master version by Kieran Connell and Bit Shifters Collective. Options to cheat if you want to. And uh, you can also redefine the keys once you're in the game, like Prince of Persia. Beautiful Matt Furnace soundtrack ported over from the Atari ST version of Outrun Europa. And there's the credits there. Kieran Connell, Tom Seddon and Hex, Simon Morris, John Blythe and Matt Furness, uh, who originally wrote the sound. And look how quickly the little ramp diagram there, the little graph thing there, draws. That's a clue for how fast this game's going to run. And look at this. Look at the frame rate. And this is the point, by the way, where you redefine your keys. It's a direct port of the C64 code. And uh, I've redefined my keys incorrectly there because it asks for you to verify what keys you've defined. And if you're wondering why there's no key to go forward, because this is supported from the C64, if you've ever played some of the keys in the C64, you'll know if you play on keyboard, the car will automatically accelerate for you. It won't boost, but it will automatically accelerate. If you're on joystick, you still have to accelerate. Off we go, and there's the computer player in front of you. And look at this game go. Straight past. It's astonishing. Coming across on the C64, and here's the C64 version for you to look at. And look, it's, it's night and day. The BBC Master runs twice as fast as the C64 and has more RAM and more ways to manipulate that RAM. And look at this thing absolutely fly. This is astonishing for an 8 bit, absolutely mind blowing. The first time I played this game, I just crashed the car. I couldn't believe it. I just come over from the C64 version, I got to the first corner, I went flying off. Um, it, it just wasn't what I was expecting. It's, it's like going from the 8 bits to the 16 bit versions in terms of speed. And it's flying, and we're out in front. You know the drill with Stunt Car Racer. You have boost, which you mustn't waste. There's down bottom, down there on the bottom left, B19 at the moment on lap two. And every time you hold down fire, it, your car boosts and goes faster. But you burn some of that boost uh, fuel. And there's a jump there. Over we go. And oh, it's so fluid. I mean, they've got this thing moving so well. I know the computer's got a twice as fast CPU as the C64, but goodness me, this is something else. They've worked magic on this. It uses the same kind of colour scheme as the CPC and C64 in terms of one colour for the track, one colour 
for the sky or those little spots of red you get on the track at times. If you notice. You might argue here that all the colour schemes are I've run the race there. Colour schemes are a little bit garish, but the BBC Micro does have the very limited palette, so you don't have an awful lot of choice. There we go, I've won that race. And of course, you know stunt car racing, you have divisions, you have to compete in divisions, and as you go up, you get more and more difficult tracks. And each racer, your race against, has different characteristics as well. Bully Boy is known for trying to force you off the track, for example, or apparently. So the next race is the Humpback. And again, look at that draw speed. Drop start. I shouldn't waste boost when I'm just being lifted off there. Drop start. You see, you can see the reds and the blacks on the edge of the track there. And off we go. Bully Boy's out in front there. Look at his car fly around. Wow, come on lads, port Star Glider to the BBC Micro now. That's what we want to see. Smash a Star Glider running at this kind of speed. That'll be stunning. Whoa, here we go. Right, overtaking him. Look at that. On an 8-bit. Whoa. Goodness me. C64 owners must be as sick as a dog looking at this. I'm a CPC owner, a Spectrum owner, a C64 owner, and wow, I'm glad I own a master. Definitively, the... Oh, he's forced me off! Oh, dear. Yeah, I'm not going to catch up with him now, am I? Definitively, without doubt, the best version for the 8-bits, and this is competing with the 16-bits, no question. Doesn't have the graphics. But by goodness me, it has the speed. Oh, I'm off again. No, crashed. There's no way I'm catching up now. I this the the only gripes I have with this game are that the P key is hardwired to pause. So when you come to redefine the keys as Q, A, O, and P as I wanted to, I couldn't. So I had to move uh, go O and I. Instead, not a huge difference, except when I put my fingers back down on the keyboard after taking them off. Yes, you can guess what happened. I hit right rather than go left and flew off the track. This is the Stepping Stones, the first track in Division 3, and one I've never been able to get. I've never got the knack of this, I don't think. I might have done back on the CPC version years and years ago. I think there's a... You've got to get the speed right. Stunt car racer requires practice on some of that. As the tracks get harder... You need to practice the tracks before you race them. Because... Oh, look at that! He's rearing up in the air and he goes flying off. And down we go. Off to the first corner. Down we go. Oh! I wonder what this plays like with the joystick on the BBC Micro. I don't I only have an analogue one, not a digital one. And they tend to go for silly money as Competition Pro on eBay the other week that went for quite a lot. Whoa! Bottom. Oh, it's getting interesting now. Yeah, that went horribly wrong. Well, yes. Uh, well, I'm not going to go over here, am I? I'm going to go backwards. The extra speed on this really... I mean, it's effectively the C64 code running here. I'm not going to do that, am I? No! I'm down the bottom now, aren't I? Yes, and I can't get out of here, can I? No! It's effectively the C64 version with bells and whistles and uh, running on a faster CPU and utilising all that extra stuff the BBC Master has. Yeah, so I lost that pretty badly. Next track's the big ramp. Never could do that track too well. This is the big ramp. Which is another track's in Division 3. Now this one always has a very tricky start section because the track swerves from side to side. Which throws you around. And it's not easy to see. You see it when you come down from on high. 
So if you watch, oh, he's rearing up. And the graphics are so oh, the enemy opponent car is. He's going to shove me off, isn't he? He's going to shove me off. Oh! I, I knew that was going to happen. And this is one of the more difficult try. This the most difficult track, to be honest, or one of them from Division One. I've cheated to get this far ahead. Oh, and uh, yeah, that was a wreck. And you need to on those more advanced tracks practice the tracks before you race them because you simply can't see far enough ahead even on the 16-bit versions to be able you know when you jump up on ramps to see where you're going so you need to know what's there so you can predict your speed and what's ahead the new version of stunt car race of the bbc micro is simply stunning it's so far ahead of every commercial release for the bbc and bbc master back in the day and really the only things you can compare with it today are the new port of Prince of Persia also by Bitshifters. This is the definitive 8-bit version. It's so fast and smooth. Okay, you're taking the advantage of having a simply stunning game to begin with. So you've got no worries about gameplay or anything like that because Stunt Car Racer is absolutely solid gold classic to begin with. But you're then putting it onto a BBC Master with its fast CPU and all of its RAM and little tricks it's got inside it that most programmers don't exploit. And you come out with something that's so fast and so smooth. It's certainly up there with the 16-bit versions. It doesn't have the graphics, of course. The tune by Matt Furness and converted by BitShifters is completely and utterly wonderful and so well suited to the game. It's an addition, but an appropriate addition to the game. I haven't played head to head. I don't even know if that works. And you know what? I don't even care because this game is simply stunning. It's the definitive version of Stunt Car Racer for the 8 bits. And everyone who's got a BBC Master or even a BBC emulator should check this game out today. And for extra fun, play one of the other 8 bit versions beforehand and then you'll really get a chance to feel the speed and fluidity of this version. And you probably crash pretty quickly as well. <laughs> 